back to La Cancha and what a super Sunday, Oscar. Yeah, it's super Sunday. If you're a fan of those clubs. <laughs> no, no, but yeah. seriously, great, great games at the bottom of the table, in mid-table, at the top four race and at the very, very pinnacle of the table. Just great matches all around, you know, matches that will live long in the memory. Yeah, it was. It was like a lot of games that we saw today were very special. Like, I don't know where to start, but like, let's start at the top with the big game of the weekend. Third versus first, Sevilla Real Madrid. And it looked like we saw the old Sevilla. Like, it was a bit of a Jack and Heights performance by them because in the first half, they were brilliant. They were bossing the game. They had total control of everything. Papu Gomez signed, but my word, in the second half, they were yeah. really disastrous defensively. Yeah. You're yeah, right, it was Jekyll and Hyde. In the first half, up or to up until 40 minutes, I thought Sevilla were absolutely superb. They pressed with the intensity that they showed in the derby against Betis. You know, um, um Rakiti scoring a fine free kick, Lamela scoring a great goal, Tecatito was playing well, and Papo was playing well, like you said. Martial was actually having a good game until he got injured for Yeah, his best game. I've seen him in Sevilla shirt. He was very active. He was like, really, yeah, he, but you're right. He did, he did get injured. He got injured Coming. and booked for getting injured. And that's, for me, is when the game turned on his head. Because in the last yeah. five minutes of the first half, Real Madrid were actually starting to threaten. Just yeah, Sevilla managed to hang on. And then the second half, man, we can talk about how much Sevilla collapsed, but we have to give credit to Real Madrid for pulling through, showing immense quality and Pressure in the second half. You know, Ancelotti with his substitutes. Yeah, both teams were basically Jekyll and Hyde in a reverse way. In a reverse way. And, and that, that substitution for Timadinga, although it was a cautious substitution for Ancelotti, I'm not sure whether he would have taken enough Timadinga if it didn't look like he was going to get second at all because it did at that point. But it turned out great because Rodrigo made a big impact in that game. Yeah, he came on, scored a very fine goal. Um, you have to also credit Carvajal as well, because and Carvajal has been getting a lot of criticism in 2022, but today, out of position, even on Wednesday, out of position sometimes, he was absolutely great. Provided two assists for Real Madrid. Nacho, another substitute, came on and changed the game. And Benzema, obviously, in the end. But the thing is that, as much as Carlo got it right with his, with his substitution, because you have to look at Lopetegui and how wrong he got it with his substitutions. It was, again, like a reverse thing. Yeah. Do you think it was a substitution issue? Because I think it was, although you're right systemically, you wrong with pressure, but I feel for all three goals, the defense yeah. let Sevilla down. And that's not something we've yeah. seen. I think yeah. for the I first mean, goal, Diego Carlos was late. For the second goal, I think you can also point a finger to Oliver not being strong enough in that moment. Yeah. And yeah. for the third goal, I don't know what Kunia and Diego Carlos would do it because both of them left Benzema free. Instead of, and then you create a situation where it was free, you could pick a spot and you could shoot. While exactly. in the past, like it would have been well marked. Yeah, I feel like they also got in bonus way of that of saving that honestly. <laughs> Yeah. That they're just standing there. But yeah, I mean, the thing is that as much as I'm saying the substitutions, the fact is that Sevilla started the half in a bad way. The substitutions yeah. only made it worse or led to one or two of the goals. Yeah, because we could see it coming, right? Those that first yeah, you can see it coming. That Benzema had where mm -hmm. Carlos and Kunde, again, they go out of position and Benzema is one-on-one -on -one against one on -one. And bonus saves God, it, but yeah, God bless his heart. Like he considered few goals, but he, he did have a yeah. quite good game. Yeah, but he, he was really yeah, you can't really fault him for any of the goals. There's nothing you could do about it. The defense let him down. The whole team let themselves down because Sevilla could not keep the ball well. And even when they kept it well, they were just passing it for passing sake. Though they didn't believe that they could go and score a third goal. And yeah. even when they got chances to score a third goal, Rafa Mir, you know, kind of lets Real Madrid off the hook or they, yeah. like, rush their chances. I think that's a key um, situation in that game because 
when Rafa Mir misses that chance, then feel that's when things start to turn. Because like at that moment, and and the thing is, football is about moments, right? If yeah. Rafa Mir scores that, maybe we're talking about a different game and City are holding on and it's a three-two mm-hmm. game. But he misses that change, and that's something that they lack. They lack that incisive finisher ever since Benyatta left the club. Yeah. And so, like one season, it was a campus that was finishing things off for them. Then he dropped off, and then Nestri picked it up. This is no one has really picked it up in a consistent way, and it's kind of surprising when you see the different profiles Sevilla have. Like you could, you'd expect more quality from their forwards. Yeah, you you would, but it's just like I'm not sure whether I feel if. They survive and they stay in the top four. I feel like he has a big cup on his hands in mm-hmm. recuperating this team because this can go on. Like you, I, you expect more from the city itself. And I feel they should have been better all season. I get the injuries part, but mm-hmm. everyone has injuries. Everyone suffers from injuries. And as the coach, it's your job to get a team that's competitive week in week. Yeah. Because another thing, and you also need to try and fix the situation when next season you don't have to be super reliant on one player to stick everything together. Because if you have to say one player is injured and that means we're just suddenly a different team, that's not really good. You're not going to get anywhere really with that. But, but to be fair, it's two, not, not, not as in better, but it's two players that really make Yeah, no, it's, it's two players, but Fernando I'm just, saying, I'm just giving an example. Yeah. Yeah, but you can rely on two 34, 33-year-olds. You mm-hmm. can't. And that's something that's maybe Monchia still in terms of his And maybe when Kunde is sold at the end of the season, they can reveal the squad. Yeah. Yeah. But in this game, there were several controversial moments. And the <laughs> first one was the Carlos handball, which... Real Madrid fans think that should be a penalty. Yeah. Uh, what's your opinion um, on that? The fact that Bono actually, I think Bono gets in Carlos, like, I think he hits Carlos in the eyes or something. So he yeah. can't, I, I think he's more in pain when he's making that leap. So I don't know. I felt it would have been harsh if you give, if you gave that. Yeah. But the thing I with handball is that nobody knows the interpretation <laughs> anymore. Yeah. If the yeah, ball no touches your hand, it's a penalty. So I don't, personally, I think about intent or yeah. like if your arm is obviously in a bad place, but putting all things into consideration, I didn't think that if it does a pants it would have been harsh. Yeah, because like, first of all, it's Bono drops the ball literally on his hands. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And he's covering Diego Carlos's eyes. So it's like, it's I almost- know, right? It's like, he's like, he's playing hide the snake in the penalty box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's the Kamavinga moment where oh that that red, red. I, I, I honestly I don't understand how. First of all, the second yellow wasn't given, mm-hmm. and also he didn't even give a free kick because I feel what's going through the referee's mind is if I give a free kick, I'm admitting first of all Kamavinga cynically takes a guy out, mm-hmm. which is a tackle foul, which is a yellow, second yeah. yellow, and he has to go. And Marshall's yeah. injured and Marshall's complaining, but we're, we're in agreement with both of them. Yeah. And the third controversial move was Vinicius's goal, which I feel should have stood. Yeah, exactly. should have stood. The thing is that sometimes from your instinct, you know when the goal should stand. I didn't want that goal to stand, but I knew it should stand. So I was very, very surprised that the referee actually stuck with his decision after looking at the VAR screen. But, you know, yeah. it is that Real Madrid's momentum was so good at that, mo- at that moment that they just went and scored soon after. So it didn't really matter yeah. in the end. Yeah, I feel it's one of those things where the referee realizes they made, it, they made a wrong decision for the time of being Venice. Yeah, but... Why. Let me even things up. <laughs> yeah, but is it really evening things up? Because if Kamavinga goes, they're down to 10 men. Yeah. In the second half, even if you don't give that one, the momentum is still massively in Real Madrid's favor. It was a matter of when they'll score and yeah. when how Benzema is going to put it in the net. <laughs> because he <laughs> knew Chelsea, that guy is going to yeah. score at some point. Yeah, as Chelsea found out this this um this past week, Real Madrid, a team of momentum. Yeah. Like, and Real Madrid, 
It's crazy um, in that game because they were losing like 3 0, and I was like, oh my God, are they really going to go out? <laughs> like, are they the Spanish team I should be worried about? Because Villarreal were losing at that point. And yeah. you know what? Give credit to Rodrigo. He's had a week to remember. Yeah. He's scored more goals in the Champions League than he has in domestic competitions. And yeah, he was very, it was very good of him to get on the end of that beautiful pass by Modric, which I wasn't really amazed by because I see the guy do it every week. I'm, I'm used to it. I'm used to that kind of excellence by now. It's like you, the guy is just amazing. And yeah, yeah but Benzema. The pundits, they never watch La Liga, so yeah, of course they don't watch La Liga, so they'll be like, "Wow, we wow." You know, I like, <laughs> yeah, and then Benzema, obviously, I know how good he is all too well. He scores another header in the tie. And yeah, it's a, it was an incredible effort from Real Madrid, a lot of guts, because they had many injuries to deal with. Carvalho, like we said, they had to play at center back. They had to bring on Marcelo <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, I know this isn't like a Premier League based podcast, but I feel Chelsea. Mm-hmm really messed up. They missed a big opportunity because yeah, they did. back four Real Madrid had at the end was Lucas, Marvajal, Marcelo, Alaba, and Chelsea didn't utilize the strength of the big players. Was that really huge? Play? Exactly. They, they stopped using Rudiger, the strength. Alonso. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How to they put on using, at that point? Yeah. They stopped using crosses after extra time. At least in the last few minutes of the 90 minutes, they tried to get crosses into the box and Pulisic had two chances he should have done better with. If he scores then, I don't think Real Madrid are coming back from that. Who knows? They've done it before. But yeah, Chelsea, they really dropped the ball on the missed chances. And if you miss chances against Real Madrid, they'll punish you. You know? Thank you. Yeah. And Real Madrid, they'll, they'll face a Man City in the semifinals. City and mm-hmm. Atleti. That was, that was fireworks, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, the last few minutes of that game were Less football and more fighting. <laughs> Which honestly, I, I don't mind. You, yeah. you like to see a good scrap, a good passion. You know, some people think fighting shouldn't be in the game. It should be all polite, you know. Forget that. You know. Yeah, like but there'll sometimes be some people that... who complain that people yeah. like the players they're hugging after games or kissing after games or before mm-hmm. games. <laughs> and when there's an actual scrap in the game, they're like, oh my God, what's happening? Yeah. Uh, these same people, they glorify Mourinho's part the bus tactics of Patrick Vera and Roy trying to kill each other in the tunnel. I mean, but enough of that. As with the whole fighting team that happened at the end of the game, I felt Athletic, they shouldn't have fallen for Man City's um, tactics to waste time, which is not a bad yeah. thing because who wouldn't waste time at that point? Athletic have done this before. If they're in a situation like that, where they are man to, they'll do it. Any team will do it. So, yeah, it's just no, like, like I feel in football, all stir in love and war, like dive in and whatever. But it's just uh-huh. that the the way it's painted in the English media, it's like it's only teams, continental teams that exactly. die, that waste time. But everyone uh-huh. does that. Like English, everyone English does clubs that. in in the two thousands when they were good, they used to do that. Like yeah. the hard fouls, like being physically imposing. And for this game, I, I was I was very disappointed with that because I feel it took them 45 minutes to realize that they could get at the City team. Yeah. Because for the first 45 minutes, the same thing happened this weekend. It was all flat from Atleti. Yeah. In the second 45 minutes, they were brilliant. They really got at City. I, I don't think City had a shot on target. I think it was about 13 shots to two at the end of Yeah, the they had one shot on target at the end of the second half. Second, like in selfish yeah. time or something. But that was after Felipe was sent off. Yeah, that was after Felipe was sent off. Yeah. I mean, I had the same issue with Atleti, so I felt they should have gone from this for Man City earlier with a different lineup. I felt like the Lodi thing, like it's, it's, while it's worked sometimes, like it's not natural to have a left back get into your most advanced positions. Is, Whereas yeah. Carrasco could be, Carrasco came on and was actually threatening. Walker and Cancelo, you know, and I felt yeah, like yeah. Mm-hmm, it felt like he could have made changes earlier. On the flip side, I had this argument with some athletic fans where they were like, "But if we opened up earlier, we could have considered earlier." Like nobody really knows what could have happened yet. At the end of the yeah. day, it's all, you know, 
like no, speculation I, I, I do, books. I do get that, but I feel at home it just has to be brave, like regardless. Yeah. And if if you're getting at them, and as I said, like so it's already on, like City would have they would have been very scared, and maybe that changed the complexion of the game. But Athletic still had very good chances at the end of the game. But with like with City, I don't think they have that number nine yeah. that's very clinical that can finish off games sure because that's some that's something i feel maybe they should try to get in summer now that Luis suarez is permanently on the bench yeah yeah i was thinking looking at athletics lineups for champions league games this season suarez barely starts in any of them so i'm thinking if suarez was more mobile he'd start because the, the clinical finishing is obviously still there in him it's just that in yeah. terms of pressing and the running, he's not going to do that. So I think that's why um, they, they need to get someone who combines the best of both worlds, the work rates that Diego Simeone wants and the clinical finishing that athletic striker should have. That's that's because Boye or NSU now, eh? Uh, I mean, the step up might be too big for them, but, <laughs> but who knows? I, I, those two are on fire this season, especially my boy, the Turk. Yeah, Mourad de Tomas was also on fire. He scored today against Atleti. And, well, if we spoke about handballs in the Real Madrid game, but did you see that? Like, this game was also conditioned by handballs. First of all, the handball yeah. by Conovia, which I feel that's a ludicrous second year this game. Because that's, yeah. in the definition of the law, if it rebounds off his body, onto his arm, that's not a foul. That's not an offense. Yeah. I didn't get that decision either. I also didn't agree with the penalty Athletic got late on because I'm like, I know, I know it touched RDT's hand, but is it really intentional? Like, is he making himself no. bigger? These are questions I ask myself. Yeah. But yeah. But like, for me, I think it's cosmic justice that that happened because I felt the Columbia red was unfair. Mm-hmm. And at that point, Athletic were dominating and they had the momentum. Yeah, but yeah. you're right. That Rowdy Tomas, he doesn't like it's one of the most casual handballs that you, that you can see, and that's really an unfair, unfair like penalty to give at the end. If I was in a Spanish fan, I'd be livid because that's so soft. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like it's it's what it is, honestly. Referees are just the talking point of every podcast and every tweet and every Instagram post nowadays. Yeah, yeah, they're they, just, they they're, terrible. They're the real stars of La Liga after Messi left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and to your point, right, you complain about the red cards and there, there have been at least a red card in every match day. This match day, there have been four red cards. Yeah, that, I think that's a high or a yeah. joint high at least. And I, I look at the games and I'm like, they are not that violent. It's not like exactly. La Liga players start like, tackling like it's 1980s football or something exactly it paints the wrong picture of the day because my brother who doesn't really watch that like, guy's always like why are there red cards every time oscar i'm like it's not what you think it is it's just referees being yeah. stupid yeah it's like when people see the red card count and they see like oh the athletic scrap and like oh my god it must be like this really really physical league it is physical in a way but it's not violence or something i don't think it's deserved but let's move on from Atleti, who had a miserable week in Europe, to another team that had a miserable week in Europe, Euro Barcelona. What happened in that game? God, you, you caught me out. I thought you were going to talk about Villarreal and keep it in the Champions League bid. <laughs> no, okay, let's, no, talk no. About, let's talk about Barcelona. Let's talk about Barcelona. To, I need to vent. Yeah, yeah, vent. I'm still not over that. Yeah. What wow. happened on Thursday was a disgrace. In every sense of the word, <laughs> from what happened in the in the stands to the pitch to the coach, it was all a disgrace. Like I, I, I don't even know where to start. Okay, here's our start. Xavi, he saw that some of the things he did against Frankfurt in the first leg didn't work, but he didn't change that. It didn't help that Eric Garcia, who had a great game in Frankfurt, decides to have an opposite day team and concede the fourth penalty in two games. 
Yeah, that puts that on the back route immediately. And then Frankfurt, who I always felt are better away from home because results show it. I feel like the fact that teams open up against them makes their transitions easier. You now have if you now have you've now made Camp New a home away from home for them. <laughs> and like what happened uh, with the fans is disgraceful. Yeah, it's disgraceful. I'm like, yeah, for me, I feel like it's complete disrespect of the Europa League. Yes, we, I, I'm sure no Barcelona fan wanted to be in the Europa League, but as far as you're in it, I feel you should respect the competition. And by the way, if we won the Europa League, we'd have been in Pots 1 and we would have avoided Bayern. <laughs> yeah, all the wild things. <laughs> yeah, now, I have to, now I have to start thinking, oh God, who are we going to get? Bayern, City... <laughs> PSG, I, I'll take I'll take PSG, but you get what I mean. Yeah. It's like Messi will finally have his ovation at the camp. Maybe. And uh, and the trashing. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's a, it was yeah. it was shameful on the pitch. We didn't yeah. look like scoring. I mean, there were times where we did one or two good things, but there were too few and far in between. We only looked like scoring after 90 minutes had passed. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was like, yeah, the, play, the players let us down, man. The coach let us down. The fans let everyone down. It's it's sad because I wanted to win the Europa League. Honestly, I like the anthem and everything, the vibe, but you know, it wasn't to be. No trophy for Javi and Co. this year. Not a plenty. Yeah. <laughs> but, but even like just the fans thing just gets to me because even the ultras didn't show up or like the singing sand didn't show up. No, I, I think some some of these like people that do the drums and everything, they showed up and they were trying to support, but then they just like they were like, What the hell is this? They even tried to leave, but Frankfurt fans said, No, you're staying for the whole 90 minutes. <laughs> and that that that, that, man, that was savage, man. Yeah, I, I sort of with Barcelona, it feels like with the fans there, sometimes it can feel a bit like glory hunters, not to paint all of them that way, but it's just when things are going well, it's so easy to build a campaign. But like mm-hmm. when things go south, because maybe it's because it's filled with a lot of tourists and everything, and with COVID and Messi leaving, maybe that's a really affected it. They can't be bothered to like these games. Yeah, and they're kind of like, I also feel like it's this natural sense of entitlement that Barcelona Real Madrid fan will have. Yeah. That makes them feel like, why should I watch Frankfurt at home? Because Jaffe, after the game last week, he said, fans, we need you to show up in numbers. They didn't show up. They sold their tickets. <laughs> yeah, and it's great. Like, I was listening to another podcast, and they're, they're talking about the logistics of getting Frankfurt supporters into the stadium and them into Barcelona itself. <laughs> which we should have been an incredible job, but in yeah, reality, they also did an incredible job against Bayern. Yeah, Fra- Frankfurt saw. Something... Yeah, Frankfurt saw yeah. Bayern go down and said, "Let's have revenge for Germany." Yeah, it's good for like your league has been good for the Bundesliga <laughs> because yeah. they have two teams in the semi-finals mm-hmm. in the Europa League, but in the Champions League, it's zero because of what the Real did. Yeah, and going into yeah. that game, like. I got a weird thing to do it. Because I got a weird sense of confidence Mm -hmm. that they were going to do what they did because it wasn't like Salzburg, like BRL weren't going to open up. And I feel what they did well is that was buying in the second half, in the first 35 minutes of the last second half, they were brilliant. And when they did get that, the Real never collapsed. They continue yeah. to defend well. They wrote their luck at times because Mueller, you could have had a couple of chances to score. Huh. And I feel Mekano had a good chance, but they just kept on going and eventually the chance again. Yeah, they took it. Yeah, it was it was very important that Villarreal did not panic when they considered one because it was almost inevitable that, you know, even though you're so concentrated, you might make one mistake. It was Pahirejo this time. But even though he made that mistake, he still played a very important part in the goal that the Villarreal eventually scored. And yeah, it was... That was an awesome counter Yeah, that was an awesome counter-attack. He just held the ball well. He also ran with it, gave it to Gerard. 
Jared obviously has the vision and the precision in his passes and Chukwezi. I was kind of worried when he went in because I'm like, I knew Chukwezi in front of goal is dicey, but <laughs> you know, he, he didn't mess up this one. It was a great take from him. And yeah, Villarreal and a Champions League semi final for the first time since 2006. And they, and they deserve it, right? Because they goal, deserve it. Because in, in this buying game, like, I, I don't think you can make an argument. They locked the reality right? because they really dominated Bayern in the first leg like, in, in yeah. a way that we thought they weren't going to. We thought they were going to defend for both legs. In the first leg, like, they should have won by two or three. And exactly. No complaints. Yeah. This leg like, in the first half, Bayern had barely any chances. Bayern they they created danger in the second, but it wasn't like they had so many clear chances. Yeah. And you say, oh, Bayern should won four zero. Exactly. The only team, but the only mistake Villarreal made over to like they got punished by it because it was like that. Yeah, it was the Lewandowski goal. That's the only mistake they made over 180 minutes. Besides that, they were as solid as a rock. You know, yeah. if you keep crossing balls into the box for Pal Torres and Albiol, they're going to head them away every time. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm a bit scared of the next one as Liverpool because like, Konate is fantastic. Yeah, Kon- Konate is exceptionally good in the air from from recent things. But yeah. yeah, against Liverpool, you know, if you keep if you did the same thing against Liverpool, they can still go through. Yeah, I feel scoring against Liverpool is going to be harder because they defend better. Well, three quarters of their back line defends better than Bayern. Anyway. <laughs> We won't talk about that other <laughs> one quarter yet. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, I feel like they have every chance. Just keep it solid at Anfield and take whatever you can back to La Ceramica and maybe you have another magic night at some point. Sure. And the fun thing is though, Anfield, they have a game in the last, in the knockout phase so far. They enter, they drew Spafika. So, but maybe because they already had a big win in the first like maybe that's why. Yeah. yeah. But Villarreal before they struggled in La Liga, but this weekend they were they were exhilarating. They scored two early goals and they should have had four this Yeah, they they were brilliant in their first half against Atafi. The movement, the passing was superb. You know, Jared scored again and assisted Trigueros. Alcacer came into the side and looked good again. The only downside to their first half was Chukwese. He kind of had an off day. But besides that, yeah. they were good. And then Hetafe, they obviously upped the pressure in the second half because they, they've had a very good good record at home under Kike Sanchez Flores. This was their first loss at home in 11 games. And that's testament to how good Hetafe have gotten since he came. Yeah. And uh, Gerard, he seems like he got injured in this game. That's a bit of a war for Liverpool. Yeah. I don't, I don't think the way he looked, he reacted, I don't think it's a serious injury. I think it's more like they're taking precautions. So hopefully he's not out for too long. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully he isn't. And the other teams fighting for a place in Europe are Real Sociedad and Betis. This was the first. La Liga game ever featured in TikTok, and maybe La Liga is regretting it because nothing yeah, happened in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Those of I'm you who know me know my thoughts about TikTok, so this <laughs> new, new disaster class was very much deserved. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, well. yeah, I, I like I slept for the first half because I was. I looked at the score at seven minutes and when I was debating whether I should nap or not, I'm like, it's a real Sociedad game at home. They don't concede a lot at home. They don't score a lot at home. I no. should just watch it on replay when I'm awake. When I woke up, I found out there's not much to watch. Yeah, you missed a lot of the Isaac messages and stuff. Yeah, I, I saw them back. Yeah, he messed, he messed up one big one against Bravo. The other ones weren't really bad. It's just that one big one against Bravo, you know, they should have put it away. Like Russia said, in their games at home, they played 16. They've only scored... They've only considered six. What happened? 
They should be an exciting team to watch. Yeah, I really don't know. I think part of it is down to the fact that Isak and Porto, their creativity has taken a nosedive this season. Oya Fabal was, it's like their goals have either come from Oya Fabal or a youngster like Lobetic suddenly scoring a goal at home. Or Zubimendi or just Elostondo. Elostondo is like, Elostondo has almost as many league goals as Isak this season, which kind of tells you <laughs> the struggles that their defenders have been, ha- that their strikers have been having. That's a pain stat for us to see that. For Real Betis, boy, did they have a chance in for right now. And I feel they'll look at it. If they had won this game, they would have been just a point behind Atleti and Sevilla. Mm-hmm. And given Sevilla's form, you could imagine them finishing in the season. Yeah, it's possible for Betis to overtake Sevilla or Atleti, you know. But it seems that you have to consider that Betis have tough games left and they already have the head-to-head disadvantage on those two teams, so they need them to drop a lot of points too. But yeah, yeah. the top four race is well and truly alive. Yeah, because Atleti and Sevilla still play each other. Mm-hmm. I believe Sevilla still have some tough away games. They have to go to the area. Uh, Atleti, they, their last five, six games are out, so you can definitely see that's thinking about one of them, because that's it, they play Real Madrid, but they're going to play Real Madrid when the league title is already finished. Already yeah, done. Not win. Yeah. Oh. So. yeah I, I, don't, I don't really see much of them for them. And moving on to Valencia, they played against Osasuna. Valencia, the reform is taking the most out, and I'm a bit worried for them, because Play Betis in a couple of already, and no, I'm not feeling too confident. Yeah, I mean, I get the league form has been, I mean, yeah, up until this loss, the league form has been solid but unspectacular. But the thing in the cup final is that it doesn't matter who, who about form, honestly. We could score an early goal or something would just break your way. You make the game as uncomfortable as possible for the opposition. Yeah, I wouldn't really worry about that game if Valencia have everyone fit. They've shown their ability to graft and get good results, especially in this competition. So you guys still have a chance in the cup for sure. It's definitely yeah. 50-50. In the league, the however... Is, like, the thing yeah, is, it's like when you compare it to Betis, right? Uh-huh. You have all these magicians like this Canales, this Fakir, this Joaquin, uh-huh. while Valencia's if Guedes doesn't do anything, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. But then real Betis aren't a perfect team either, you know? No. Their defenders still make the odd mistake and yeah, give away right? penalties. <laughs> you know, so there is good at scoring penalties. So. Penle, man. Penle. Penle. Penle versus... <laughs> Borja Penglisias. Penglisias. I'm struggling with that one. Yeah. No, no, no. I guess this is a good signal to move on to the bottom of the table. Uh, we can talk about Salta Athletic, but Salta won. They were solid. The Fran Beltran scored a belter. Athletic. Yeah. Same story. Similar to Ralph's today, but these basketballs. They yeah. can't seem to find the back of the head. Mm-hmm. I, I saw the front, I, when I saw Fran Beltran lining up to take his shot, I cursed because I'm like, are you really going to shoot from there? And then when it went in, I'm like, <laughs> goodness. And he scored a very good goal against Wesker last season in that four trip between them and Celta. This one is much better, obviously, man. Yeah, yeah like this, so if, was, if Cristiano Ronaldo scored this. If Cristiano yeah, Ronaldo scored a sec, like everyone would have been mental about this game. Everyone would have been mental because it was the, the dip and the swerve on that ball. The, and what's his name? And Simon had no chance with that at all. No goalkeeper would have had a chance with that. Not even the giraffe at Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not even him. And yeah. today, or yesterday, like there were tons of big games at the bottom. Let's start with the game today. Granada versus Levante, 
four and one to Levante. God, there yeah. are so many things to pick apart. Yeah. And how Levante played well, they played very well in the first half. In the second half, that's where the controversy struck. And the referees in La Liga, again, they had to spoil a good game. Because whether it's penalty or not, I think it's a very soft penalty. But why do you have to get the second yellow for something that's a foul? It, it makes no sense, honestly. That's not book. That's not a bookable offense. Yes, even if it's a penalty, like don't send him off. Don't book him. I mean, because that's not a yellow card word either. No. Yeah, a similar thing happened against Getafe and Mallorca the other week, where someone got and Russo got sent off for a soft penalty and a non-existent card. Yeah, but I don't get the thing with the referees because it seems like every time they go to the bar. And you say it's a penalty. They automatically bring out the yellow card, mm-hmm. and it's it's almost like they're pissed that they got it wrong, so they didn't take it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good theory, actually. Yeah, yeah. but after after the red card, Granada so so it goes. They fell apart. Yeah, it was a counter attacking masterclass by Levante. Morales, since he came back from international break, has. Reminded me of Messi in 2012, just scoring <laughs> goals for fun. Uh, his goal, his assists as well were very, very good. And it was important for Levante that they scored at least three goals today because the reverse fixture, Levante, Granada won 3 0. So if you want to catch Granada, for instance, you need to at least make sure your head to head cancels each other out or it's better than theirs. Because the thing with yeah. goal difference is that it's goal difference is easily modifiable, it, it depending on yeah. yourself whether you get trashed or not. With yeah, heads, if Granada, head, have, it's like oh, a permanent yeah. thing. Yeah, because Granada they have a flat team and Levante have severe. Mm-hmm. And I can see Levante winning that game in Granada maybe. Yeah, Leva- to- yeah, there's a, there's more of a chance <laughs> of Levante beating Sevilla than Granada going to the one than picking up a win. Well, who knows? The Levante are going to do this on They're going to find a way to Yeah, I, I, I kind of hope they do because, like I said last week, they add so much excitement to the league. So much. They take down the big boys like they're nothing. So hopefully they can stay up. And how much but, of a credit should we give Alexander Lichy if they do stay up? A lot of credit because clearly it wasn't easy for any of the other coaches they had to get a win out of this side, you know? He's right, coming. Yeah, he, he came in, he picked the back five, and he's more or less limited the amount of mistakes that the team makes. They still make mistakes, but they're not as severe as they used to be. Yeah. Like last week against Barca, so that was bad defensive mistake for the goal for the young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess for Granada, they're happy because Mallorca also got a big thrashing by LJ. Yeah, LJ ran riot in, from the minutes one. Fidel had two assists for Mojica and Bigas. Bigas is a former Mallorca player, so, you know, you'd expect him not to celebrate, but he was mad to celebrate, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that late Kangin on goal from... Oh, my God. Yeah, from Mallorca's point of view, just killed their hopes. Yeah, it's like back to the drawing board after beating Athletic last week, and it's not looking good because Alavante at least have the better head-to-head against Mallorca, and now I think Alaves do because Alaves, Alaves might because Alaves have to play Mallorca soon. I think they're looking well for Alaves. I give you something. They got the win against Rio. Possible again, like where would they be without yeah. him? Yeah, they'd be in the segunda already. <laughs> they'd say just give up, <laughs> go, 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 wait on standby. <laughs> yeah, but Hossa, Hossa normally the associated goal from Hossa being maybe from the spot or like a very good header, but this time it was a left footed strike from distance, which I thought Dimitrescu didn't handle well. He should have, he should have done well. He should, he should have gotten it. He made good and saves it, already in the game to deny Hustle from scoring earlier, but this one is like, you know, the life of a goalkeeper. Yeah. 
it's it's crazy what's happening to Raya, right? Because we're speaking about the relegation zone and we're not involved in Raya, but Raya are five points or six points behind. Things can yeah. change very quickly and they're going in a downward Oscar? Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I got lost for a bit. <laughs> the, yeah, my connection was a bit bad. Yeah, you were no, saying no, about no. Ryo going on a downward spiral, and yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look likely that they'll get relegated because it's not like everyone below them is going to win all of their games, but this is not looking good at all for next season. Yeah, but even this season, right? Like, I know there is Ryo can get a win and a draw and they can save themselves. But it's difficult to see where the win's going to come from because you'd see, you'd assume this game was winnable. The one last week against Valencia was winnable, but it's not coming. Yeah. It's, I really don't know what to say. It's, like, it's just giving me Levante vibes from last year because the same thing happened to them. They had a good start. Well, the, Levante, in their case, they had a good middle of the season and got to a cup final. And then everything just started coming back from there. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what this reminds me of? Do you remember Abar, the first season that he got promoted? Yeah, and in 14, he had an amazing, he had an amazing first round, and they were in mid table. Mm -hmm. And then I believe it took them until like the penultimate game to win again. And <laughs> yeah. that's how they saved themselves. <laughs> it just reminds yeah, me because they finished 18th, but they didn't get relegated because Elche had financial difficulties. Yeah, it's true. This kind, this is kind of similar to that situation. Maybe Rayo. Will... I hope they don't win against us, because then it's it will just be typical <laughs> Barcelona bad luck. <laughs> they get their first win and do the double over us when we're trying to <laughs> finish as high as possible. Yeah, and, and how do you see Cadet doing tomorrow against Barcelona, given that Aral goes out? I believe PK is out as well. Oh my God, you know, I was, I was, I, I think you're. I didn't know what I, my reaction when I remembered both of them were out. I'm like, God will help us because <laughs> Eric Garcia, I, he was winning me over. But the last game from him kind of has left a sad taste in my mouth and Longley. I mean, <laughs> the, fact that Pedri, yeah, the fact that yeah, Pedri is also injured. I'm like, we need to... I don't know. We need. We just need to click an attack and just cancel whatever they do at the back. Yeah, I think I'm that that would be. Scores. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. With Obama and Gamak, not even starting me against Cadiz, I might start someone else. That will kill and my fantasy maybe... team, bro. Come again. I said that will kill my fantasy team, bro. That's another reason why you shouldn't start. <laughs> I mean, he should. I mean, I'm not against him, but I just think like the type of team Cal desire, they might actually take a page out of Frankfurt's book and play back five and cause us similar problems. So I think we need someone who, if we can pass the ball to and he'll hold it up, maybe the pie of Ferran or maybe Luke De Young from the start and just whipping crosses like everyone is accusing us of being a crossing team. <laughs> just, for, just for the lulls, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like being a first team isn't that isn't a bad thing. Football can play and get him. Ready. Exactly, it's not a bad thing because the way football is going now, you're not going to get the magical runs through the center of anyone's defense anymore. So you need to make sure you use the wings or the half spaces very well, and that involves crossing. Yeah, like Real Madrid did against Sevilla pretty much. Exactly, Real Madrid did. Real Madrid are not afraid to go route one if they need to. So, yeah, so uh, even us under Javi, we've been more direct than I thought we'd ever be. But that's useful because you need to, you don't, you can't be a one trick pony anymore, essentially. Moving on to Italy, did you see Marcel Brozovic's goal against Spetsy? No, I, I didn't see it. How was it? It was, it was a nice ball. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah, I need to check it out. Yeah, you need to check it out. And that lets it enter. Still, they're still trying to hold on to Milan. Milan also won 
on Friday, but the gap is two points into have a game in hand. A game in hand. So it, it looks like they're picking up form right at the right moment. Ever since that win against Juventus, they've been going on a streak. They've been picking up form again. And for Milan, those two nil no draws back to back certainly haven't helped them. The advantage is gone. Napoli, yeah, Napoli are playing against Roma tomorrow, and Roma actually okay. have designs on the top four place now. Yeah, yeah, because you they drop points, and Roma they finally beat uh, Bodo. <laughs> they finally beat Bodo. <laughs> so yeah, they, they have a good chance of winning the Europe, the Conference League. Mourinho has done a good job there, so maybe he can have the extra bonus of getting them to top four. And if he gets them to top four, like, will that be more of Juve just messing up, or is that Mourinho doing a great job in his first season there? Uh, I'd say it's more of it's more of Roma being good, because you, because you, I mean, no one thought they'd be near fifth at some point. So, I think if you offer them fifth in November, they take it. But if they were to get fifth from this point, it's obviously going to be a bad thing. That's true. That's true. And let's. Go on to an, another big Liverpool City game was happened this weekend, this time in the FA Cup. Yeah. City got exposed again. Yeah, I mean, Pep made a lot of changes that surprised me. But it kind of makes sense because you have to rest your players at some point. But I guess he just put his, the FA Cup at the list of his priorities and started Fernandinho against a fully strength Liverpool team. It also didn't help them that Zach Stefan saw what Ed Ederson did the other day and said, <laughs> hey, I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be Stephen. his lips. Yeah. But if, if Ederson is injured for some reason, Stefan should just... <laughs> I mean, they, they should just play Scott Carson. <laughs> his best, he, he, he'll keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. That's but funny. yeah, with, yeah, as for, yeah. Sorry, I was going to say for Liverpool, they have a chance to win the quadruple. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that too. They're going to win all four trophies, aren't they? Uh, um, I, I don't, I hope not. I, at least I hope somebody else wins the Champions League in yellow. In yellow. Mm. But the chances of that happen, let's be realistic. Football is going to have its way with us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, so, it's, it's, it's very low. Yeah, it's very low, very, very but low. who speaking, knows? Yeah. yeah, speaking about yellow teams, Borussia Dortmund, out of nowhere, 6-1 against Wolfsburg. Was this it? I thought it was 6 no. 6-1, 6-1, Wolfsburg. Oh, they, they considered one, okay. Yeah, yeah, five goals in 14 minutes. Holland, Holland go finally scored. <laughs> yeah, Holland, go back and score shit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, but, you know, it's all... In a good day's work ahead of next week, next week's spectacle. That's the big one against Bayern. And yeah. given how Bayern played against Villarreal, I would fancy Dortmund. Do you really fancy Dortmund? Dortmund don't know how to defend like Villarreal. True, true. That, that is true. Dortmund yeah. are going to go gong ho like to to toe with Bayern and. It's that kind of game that suits Bayern more. When teams attack them, then they can run in behind, show their intensity in transition. Against the well-organized block, there's nowhere to transition to. Yeah. yeah. I would say if Dortmund played a season, they, they do have a chance. Because Bayern, they haven't really been looking good in the last week. So I know they won. Yeah. Against Salzburg, the last three they struggled in the Bundesliga. I'm sorry, the one against Armenia, but last week they struggled in the Bundesliga. I can against see. It. Yeah. yeah, there's a chance for Dortmund, but you know, ultimately, I think beating your rivals in the biggest game in Germany is a great feeling. Obviously, so even if you don't win the league, at least get that monkey off your back that oh, we haven't won at the Allianz for so long. Yeah, that's true. And also, shout out to Leipzig. They won away to Leverkusen, which is a tough place to go. And as well as they won away to Atalanta, which means that, do you think they're the favorites in the European League? Yeah, uh, the four teams left, they're definitely the strongest one. 
Yeah. So and also a big shout out to West Ham as well because mm -hmm. they beat yeah. me off and them being in the quarterfinals the year previous special. Yeah, and it's a great achievement for West Ham because since Moyes came back to the club, everyone was like, oh, why bring David Moyes back? But he's shut his haters up, essentially. He's shown, he's shown like a great amount of leadership for West Ham and they're three games away potentially from being the Champions League. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. So crazy. Also, Rangers are three games away yeah. too. Yeah. Honestly, like, I'll, I'll, I'll love it if Rangers also, like, like just that insurance. Like, all the four, like, they're, they're nice stories. And that's what makes the Europe League such a gifted competition. Yeah. Any of the four that win, I'll be happy. Even Frankfurt. And Frankfurt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Frankfurt's look nice in Barcelona. Please continue. We got knocked out. The Champions of Champions. Yeah, I mean, obviously. if yeah. we went out to the eventual champions, I won't be mad about that. Mm. The Conference League also looks tasty as well. I believe Roma, Marseille, uh, Leicester is in there. I forgot the last team. We had it as well. But it should be, it should be a nice affair. Yeah, it should be a nice mm -hmm. affair. Roma and Leicester are going to play against each other. Uh, uh, the last team is Feyenoord. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so three, good, three and four nice stories to have winning the first Conference League trophy. Yeah. Marseille and Feyenoord, but they got smashed, or not smashed, they got beaten by SAA. Neymar and Mbappe are <laughs> scoring again. Yeah, controversially from the spot. <laughs> Some people had their problems with the penalty that PSG had. Seems everyone's having a problem with like controversy today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the referees just don't are just doing whatever they think is right at this point. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's just get it's just tiring having to talk out the same problem every week. It's like when is it going to end? I have no idea what the criteria is for things like balls for second yellows. For even fouls that are being bred <laughs> this is I, I just stop like whenever I see a call, it's like, you know what, it is what it is. Yeah, it's like there, there's no, there's nothing else to say at this point. It's just we we do we hope it will change one day, but the likelihood of it changing seems lower with every passing match day. Yeah, that is true. And on a, on that sad note, <laughs> yeah, we shall end the podcast. <laughs> And yeah, it was a sad week, way to end it. <laughs> yeah, next week it's going to be, I believe the midweek is going to be super packed with games, but maybe yeah, we'll so record podcast on Sunday. Just and yeah, we'll record the podcast together. on Sunday because we'll just do all this together, then the cup final, and then Rio Barcelona, which is on yeah, Sunday. Barcelona to play three times by the time. Two times. Oh, yeah, three times, three, times, three times. Yeah. Yeah, three times. Like, so. Had it, we also said that, Rayo. Yeah, hopefully three wins, but who knows? Life knows, can have its way with you. Yeah, and the cup final is going to be something special. And who do you think is going to win? Who's go I'm going to say Valencia win. 2-1. 2 one. Okay, no, not 2-1. Two 2-2, one. Two -two, then Valencia win on penalties. Penalties. Yeah, I just want the game to go on as long as possible. I want to see both sets of fans <laughs> suffer. <laughs> suffer. I, I think I think there might be fights in this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not in the prediction game, but I, I just have to say that that is what this one. Um I just hope like it's a com it's, it's a very competitive game, like it's not boring. Yeah. Like the, the last cup final wasn't Barcelona. Yeah. The last final wasn't competitive. Four like zero. Was... I hope it's a lot similar to the Valencia Barcelona final, in where both sides have chances and it's competitive. I hope it's not like Ross and Real Betis because that's that's the Barca Athletic. Although Barcelona played really well, but it was just. Sick. 
and I hope all of you enjoy the cup final next week. And we'll be there to pick up the pieces, maybe with a surprise guest. Who knows? Uh, have a good one and enjoy the rest of your week. Surprise guest.